Hey there, I just wanted to show you some stuff. If you go to the Chrome Developer Tools site um, and go to their documentation link and go to using the console, there's some great little tips on being more productive with the console. I'm going to look at a couple of them here. Um, first thing is how do we open the console? Well, if we use Command Option J, that will open it directly into the console. If we just want to open up developer tools in general, you can also do command option I. And this is on a Mac, so you'll have to look up uh, for Windows. Um, and obviously, if you want to log in the console, you just do something like this, and that works. So we're actually in the console's command line, and we can do fun stuff like actually execute JavaScript and get stuff back, but that's no fun. Um, let's talk about uh, some other things. I'll just go through some things real fast. Um, if you got a bunch of junk like this, you can actually call clear to clear the console. Um, and you can write to the console with log, as we know, but we can also use some different levels and uh, one tip is to just type dot after a console and then come in here and just scroll and see what's available. And we'll go through some of these, but one of them would be warn. And this is a warning. And as you can see, you get a little yellow exclamation mark icon. You can do console log error. This is an error. And you get some red error appropriate text. Now let's say um, you have some code. Let's do a function foo, and it takes a number, and say we were going to create an array, and we want to loop through. Um, let's just not worry about checking that ends a number, and we'll just say i i equals zero, i is less than n, and we're just going to push these into that array uh, like that and then um, and then maybe return the array okay but we're worried about uh, n being too large so let's just say that one of our preconditions was that um, that n is less than 100. Otherwise, n must n must be less than 100. So, what's going to happen is if we call foo of n um, with less than 100, we get an array of the 10 back. If we do 101, we get an assertion failure. So if you want to put temporary assertions in, um, that's one way you can do it. Kind of cool. Um, what else? So the other thing is you can use these um, formatting options. So uh, let's create a string. This is a string. And let's create a number. Okay, and now let's log this. You can do like this, uh, str plus, um, or let's do this like this, string plus str plus uh, int, and then the int, right? And so that's just pure concatenation. But you can also do this using the format specifier. So I could say string and then use the string specifier and then int and then my int, or rather str, my int, and we get a similar result. Um, so far not too exciting, but let's look at some stuff which is I think really cool. Say we want to really kind of grab your attention or say we have a ton of console output there's a couple things we can do to 
um, to make a console log stick out. And I really need this, and I was excited to find this. This must be seen. And now we can actually use some styling. So let's um, let's make this color, I don't know, cyan, and make the font size. Let's just make it really big. I think that should work. And there you go. Another thing you could do, and you can remember these by just hitting console dot and scrolling through if you forget them, and you can group. So let's say this is going to be important um, logging, right? And then we're going to um, say we're, we're, we're in the uh, command line console, so we have to do this all in one line. But in your code, you could spread this out. Uh, this is important check one. And I'll just cut and paste this real quick. And we'll just say two and three. And so there we have some nice indentation. And of course, we could always combine this with, um, say, check three is really important. We could do something like this. This is really important check and then we can style it right so we could say color green okay so that's kind of cool um, especially if you have if you already have a ton of output going from different places and you really want to be able to drill in and see uh, just the thing you just wanted to look at another thing we can do um, I don't want to go too deep into to all of these, but um, uh, let's see. Mm. Oh, one last thing I want to do is console and monitoring events. How many times have you used Backbone or something and you have an event and you're not sure if it or if it's firing or why isn't it firing? So, um, actually, it's not in console. I can monitor events and there it is and so for example let's say on the window this is out of the, the tutorial on the Chrome developer tools console site but now if I go in and resize you can see that event is firing pretty cool and if you of course are going to eventually want to unmonitor the events and you just pass the whole object that you're listening on. And uh, they had an example on document body. Um, I think it was something like this. Or document body. <clears throat> and you can pass in an array of events. So mouse enter. Mouse out, I think. I don't have a cheat sheet. Yeah. Well, the mouse out. Uh, mouse down? <laughs> oh my goodness. Mouse down. Proof that I don't have my cheat sheet. Okay. Well, whatever that event was. Mouse. Mouse out. Mouse in. I won't waste your time if this doesn't work. Yeah. My bad. Well. Just trust me, you can register multiple events. So let me unregister, or unmonitor rather, document body, so I don't have that going on the whole time. So those are some quick tips for console, um, Chrome console. And a lot of these work in Safari console too, since it's WebKit. Um, there was one or two that, that didn't quite behave the same. I don't think I was able to do the CSS styling with the percentage C. So otherwise, though, you can you can do a lot of this. I think you could even do monitor events. So fun stuff.